Hi friends, welcome to Moody Blooms. I'm Mary Ellen and today we are going to redo my parents' front flower bed. There is a lot going on here. They've got all kinds of rose bushes and there's some asparagus fern. There's some geraniums and this random giant bush over here to the right. And there's just a lot going on. There's not really any method to the madness and it's just kind of uh, been overlooked. So I'm gonna help them out and plant some succulents. So I've taken out all of the bushes. My dad said I had to leave the giant bush on the right. This asparagus fern that I was talking about in a nursery visit video. You can see it's, it's on me. There's a caterpillar on me? Show it. Oh, excuse me. Look who's just climbing all over me. Oh my gosh. As you can see the roots on here, these little bulbs, they go everywhere and they replant and it's super invasive. So be careful where you plant these for sure. But all right, so this is the before. It was up to me all this business would come out too, but these have been trimmed back ridiculously, but we'll go back nice and full. So yeah, let's get to it. Making progress. So here you can see I've been kind of playing around with the placement of some of the succulents. And I think once my dad saw what I had kind of had an idea or vision of, he finally agreed to remove the giant bush on the right because it was so high, it was so awkward. And so he let me remove everything from the flower bed. <laughs> you got a small space. Look at all that's going to go in it. Maybe just pick three or four of them. No, I promise you, you'll, you'll like the way it looks. Right, Mom? You're going to love it. Babe, you can never have too many... You look like the jungle. You can never have too many succulents. False. Yes, all these beauties are going back in. I need them all, right? I need variety. So it's a good space. Just need a rotor till it. I need to start this room. Oh, man. Almost. Almost. That one's cool, the freaking locomotive. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. I think some money was. Well. Woo! I got gas. Yeah. Is that, see, Craftsman? 1908? Yeah. yeah. Where did you see that? I was just kidding. Oh. <laughs> it is a Sears Craftsman. <laughs> With a Harbor Freight right? motor on it. Oh, he changed the motor out? Yeah. Hey, babe. Um, that's poor little gas in the carburetor. Okay, yeah. this is going to be round two. Add a little more gas. Come on, Nick, you can do it. If you can't do it, I don't know who could. I know, I know. Dad, you're 76. Oh. Want me to try to keep warming it up? I mean, I'm about as good as Grandpa. Oh, there it goes. Here we go.
we decided to add a drip line. So luckily there was already an existing sprinkler system so we could add another valve on there for our drip lines. The only problem was we had to dig from the white pipe to the sprinkler system, which is about six vertical bricks wide and sounds easy, but there's tons of roots all the way through. So it was quite a, a challenge. Luckily, my dad rigged up this PVC pipe attached to the edge of the hose so we could add a little bit of water and dig. But let me tell you, my arms were definitely scraped and scratched up trying to dig all the way underneath those bricks. And it, it took quite some time, but we were able to finally get through thanks to this handy dandy contraption. But I am looking forward to planting succulents instead of digging. But we got them all in and installed and we have a valve for our drip line. Now some of the wood was repaired in the back from some termite damage and we had to get that all fixed up before the property could be professionally painted. So I'm trying out a few different options with the succulents and then of course my dad notices some patching that needs to be done and who is one to do it. It's of course me because I'm not going to have my dad up on this sketchy ladder system that they got going on. He has a brand new ladder but decided to use this one even though this one is rigged in a little bit of a sketchy situation. Next I recruited my younger son to help me turn over the soil and took out all the dead roots that we could find. Then we got our drip line all installed and ready to go. Much easier than digging under the bricks, but uh, it was definitely a success and I know the succulents are gonna be happy. Okay, this is the after. Just added some soil. So just need to decide next which succulents are gonna go where. I have plenty to choose from. Most of these are from cuttings or um, cuttings from my own yard. And then the first ones I installed were the Aeonium Arboreum and these are great because they're tall for the back. And then I tried a few different ways to have them displayed. And I decided to kind of start at the top and kind of bend it and then curve down. I liked kind of the wave look to it. The first plant I added was the aloe brevifolia, and this is also known as the crocodile aloe, and these are super low maintenance. Next was the aeonium urbicum, and these are also just huge. And then I also added some graptivaria fret ives, and these are awesome. These have these beautiful pinkish purple colors, and they can stress almost any color of the rainbow in heat, cold, or with plenty of sunlight. After that, I planted some Senecio vitalis serpents, and these are great for adding height. And then this is two months after planting everything. In the back corner, I planted the Kalanchoe and then some uh, Crisula ovata golem in the far right. Up front, we have the Kalanchoe paddle plant, or also known as flapjacks. Below the paddle plants are the Echeveria imbricatas. And this is seven months after planting. You can see everything's coming in nice and full. And then I added some rocks as a ground cover around the succulents. And this helps with weeds and it also helps with um, allowing the soil to retain its moisture. And I just think it looks really good with the added rocks on there as well. But everything's coming in nice and full. I've been really happy with it. Should have actually planted the Fred Ives in front of the Aeonyms. They're huge. I mean, look at the size of my hand. Look at this, my daughter's head. This is nine months after planting. It's massive. This is 11 months after planting. We have some Aeonium flowers in the back right corner. And then this beautiful crested imbricata. And you can see the nice red tips on the paddle plant. The Aeoniums in front also started to bloom. And this flower that's coming out of there is massive now. And this is 13 months after planting. And I'm really happy with it. So hopefully you can notice the pattern and the curve that I originally planned for this flower bed. It's much more overgrown than I thought it would be. I, this is my first landscaping project. Of course, I've done succulent arrangements in pots or bowls or stuff like that, but nothing of this scale yet. But um, yeah, look at these in the back. Isn't this insane? This is crested. I've never seen this. It's a magical mermaid tail but I thought these were just awesome. And then the uh, Fred Ives, 
over here have also flowered and they're just lovely little cute flowers and then here's another look at this crested imbricata just obsessed with this well i hope you enjoyed this video about the planters that i redid in my parents front yard needed some help and we'll see you next time on the next video if you're new to the channel hit subscribe and give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time